In this episode, we'll look at how to set up your motorized gimbal with your mirrorless camera. In this case, we'll do it with the Zhiyun Crane. I've heard a lot of feedback from various people on disappointment with their motorized gimbals, and there are a variety of reasons for that. These kind of devices take a little bit of work. You have to invest yourself a little bit. You have to learn how to use them. You have to especially learn how to balance your camera on them for them to work effectively. So let's take a look at how to do that. We'll be using the Zhiyun Tech Crane gimbal, which is made for mirrorless cameras like the Sony A7 cameras or the A6000 series, 6300, 6500 for the Panasonic Lumix series, and even for the Canon M series. It's really tempting to think that if you buy a really expensive gimbal that you can just pop your camera on there and start running around and expect buttery smooth shots. That is not the case. You still, you need to learn how to properly balance your camera first of all, which relies on physics. So there's some physical things you have to do. And then once you've done that, you also need to work on technique a little bit. So let's take a closer look. First warning, don't turn your gimbal on until you have a camera mounted on the gimbal and balanced. If you do that, you can damage your gimbal. Order in which you do these things is pretty important. First of all, if you're using a zoom lens on your camera, you will want to zoom in or out to the point that you want to shoot with because that can change the center of gravity of your camera, so you'll do that first. After you've mounted the camera on the base plate, you loosen this screw and adjust this joint up and down until the camera stays facing directly down. The lens is facing directly at the ground. Then from there, you adjust the camera on the base plate forward and backwards until the camera lens stays horizontal with the ground. Then for the roll axis, you adjust this so that your camera is sitting flat on a horizontal line. And then finally, you hold this particular gimbal like this to take care of the pan axis. Essentially what you do is you move until the camera does not tilt one way or the other. And then you'll know it's properly balanced if you can hold the gimbal up without the gimbal on and it will generally be pointed in the right direction. Now, a few other tips in terms of using this gimbal and pretty much any other as well. You'll need to work on your technique a little bit when you're walking or running to find a way to kind of smooth out your steps a little bit. So that takes some practice. You'll want to figure out if you need to do one or two handed. I know this is a single handed gimbal, but sometimes having two hands can make a difference. I also find that with the crane that it works best if you hold the handle pretty much vertically while you're walking. That seems to smooth out the footage the best. You'll also want to experiment with image stabilization settings on your camera maybe called optical stabilization on some cameras. Everyone has a different name for it, but turn those on and then, and then turn them off doing tests and see which one comes out smoother. You may be surprised to find that your particular image stabilization on your camera kind of interferes with the movement of the gimbal. So in some cases, it may be better to leave it off. If you shoot with the frame rate set to 30 or 60, this can help give you a smoother feel to it as well. And particularly if you shoot it at 60, then you have the option in post of slowing that footage down. So you get kind of a really nice smooth slow-mo kind of look. Now there are three modes on the Zhiyun Crane, and the first one is lock mode. I like to use this mode if I'm doing a crane type of shot. By a crane type of shot, I mean where you're moving the camera from a low position to a high position to kind of do an establishing shot or the inverse, high to low. If you put it in lock mode, what that does is it prevents the camera from also panning accidentally. So it keeps it pretty much locked straight ahead and it just adjusts um, the camera lens so that as you move up and down, it's still pointing the same direction. It looks really quite nice. Now when I'm walking or running, I like to put it into either pan following mode if I do plan to do some panning by twisting the handle on the gimbal, which is something, again, practice with that. You'll kind of get the feel for it over time. Or I put it in lock mode if I don't want it to pan at all. And then finally, there's pan and tilt following mode. This is the type of mode you'll want to use if you want to actually be able to point the camera in all directions just by moving it and twisting the handle. Um, as you lean it forward, it will tend to look down as you pull it back up. It will look up, so it's a pretty interesting mode as well. I don't use that one as nearly as much, but it is nice to have it. A few other things you might be wondering about this particular gimbal. This is the Zhiyun Crane. In terms of battery life, with the included batteries, it says that you get about six hours. In my practical experience, I think that's generally true. And it does come with two sets of batteries, which is really nice. So you can pretty much run this thing all day long with the included batteries and get lots of great footage. There is an additional set of batteries you can purchase, which Zhiyun claims can get you 12 hours of battery life with the crane. I love the fact that the Zhiyun crane is toolless. You don't need any sort of Allen wrenches or hex wrenches. There are thumb screws to adjust each of the different settings to balance the camera. This makes setting up much quicker, and quick is important if you want to get the shot. In terms of build quality, the Zhiyun crane is fantastic. Everything is solid metal, except for the little joystick that you use with your thumb to change the tilt settings. Um, other than that, 
incredibly solid. You can also download an app for iOS or Android, which allows you to calibrate or update the firmware on the crane, which is a nice touch. And then finally, you can also work with this in inverted mode, that is upside down, if you want to get those low angle shots, which is really pretty cool with a, with a gimbal like this. What you do to get to that mode is you kind of move it in this fashion here. I like to turn it off or put it in standby mode first, flip it around this way, turn it back on, and you should be all set to go. So there's a look at setting up your gimbal. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And be sure to get your more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.